So there's going to be more. I think there's going to be more and more ads in video games. It's not even going to. It's not going to stop. It's just going to get worse. Okay. That would straight up make me not buy a game. Yeah, but then whenever every game has it, what happens? And then like you say that, and then finally the game that you like has one of them, and you're like, oh, well, it's not that bad. And then you start doing it, and then they break the ice, and all of them have it, and that's it. You know that that's how it goes. Advertisements, oh, no. ads, aka that thing you see everywhere all of the time. No matter where you go, and no matter what you do, ads can and will find you, Brian. That is a certainty sure in do. life, along with death and taxes and that thing when the waiter says, enjoy your food, and you say, so you I love too. you too, senpai. In video oh, games, yeah, okay. the beautiful, magical world of escapism and wonder that is video game, sadly it, no exception. Video games have been tainted with the that is video I don't know what they were thinking with this one like I remember seeing this one back at like uh you know uh, game crazy or uh EB games or something like this I really yeah it, it's a fucking but it's a banana or a boomerang I don't know which one's a trouble controller <laughs> well to be fair they probably should have made that for me I threw my controller all the time game sadly it no exception video games have been tainted yeah. with the foul odor and slimy snail trail of product placement and advertising for many a fortnight pun intended so that's a good one unfriended but is all advertising in video games bad are some ads for good and not just greed how did we get here and where the hell are we going brian dude you're driving just hand me your phone multitasking is not one of your starting attributes brian the year is 1970 i feel like pretty much every kid who's like 17 who drives now is on the phone like, any time, like, because my dad, it just makes him so fucking pissed off. Because, like, we'll be sitting there behind somebody, and he's like, oh, the, the light's green. Why isn't he going? I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, why isn't he driving? The light's green. He's in the car. He's driving the car. But he's on his phone. He's like, well, what do you mean they're on their fucking phone? How are they supposed to just be on their fucking phone? Aren't they supposed to be, I don't know, driving? I'm like, ah, you know, it is what it is. A A D. Advertising. Scott Adams releases Adventureland, a text-based game with no graphics. My mom played this. Straight up, I actually went like this is some straight up like archaeological shit. So I was cleaning out my closet, okay? And I, I find out, like, I unironically was doing this, I cleaned everything out of my old room. Like, my old room, it was so dirty that whenever I got to the very core of the room, there was dead rats that had melted onto old hard drives and old um, motherboards. Yeah. It, it, it was no big deal. And, and so I took a picture of them too. Like, cause I, I, the problem, like it happened, I just sh shut the door and that way it didn't smell as bad. So I just forgot about it for like, you know, five years or something. Well, anyway, I finally got down to the bottom of it and I find this fucking binder and it's like this binder, you, you know, like the old white paper that's like brown now and you open up the paper and it was just a bunch of fucking dungeons and dragons and adventure shit. And I brought it over and I showed it to my mom. This is like three years ago. I'm like, what is this? What is this ancient artifact? Can you decipher this for me? And she was explaining to me that it was like this text-based adventure game that she would play on the computer in like the 70s. And I've never seen anybody ever talk about it before until this video right here. This is the first time. Holy shit. And worse, no kill streaks. And yet, Adventureland holds one of the earliest examples of in-game advertising. An ad for Scott's next upcoming, even sexier game, Pirate Adventure. Oh boy. Ooh, shiver me timbers. Wow. <laughs> Look out, Sea of Thieves. <laughs> Scott, Scott be like, yo, Michael's off Sea of Thieves nuts can fit in your mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so it's the 80s and product placement is already in f***ing everything. Yeah. But also, PP is... I think the most popular product placement is uh is wayne's world like i feel like the product placement in that game or sorry that movie was just like so overt it became part of the content starting to show up in the world of yeah, video Pepsi. games as well yeah. primarily in the form of the advert game which is exactly what it sounds like a video game built solely around advertising a oh, single oh dude the cheetos game on super nintendo this one was actually good 
What the fuck? Yeah, I remember this. This was actually a good one. Product or company. One of the first advert games is in 1983 with Tapper yeah. prominently featuring Budweiser and sold to be played in bars, but nobody really gives a shit about the product placement because they're drunk, but also the game yeah, is true. just really fun. So fun that a year later the game was rebranded as Root Beer Tapper and sold in regular arcades for children too, so now all the kids are like, Hey bud, oh. why'd you put this in W, man? I'm shit <laughs> Now the big video game crash of 1983 would slow things down for a bit, but the late 80s and 90s saw a huge resurgence of advert games. He's talking about Donald Land over in Japan in 1988, because over there, Ronald McDonald is often known as Donald McDonald, which <laughs> I'm just... They really do shit differently over there, huh? Donald McDonald, oh my god. I bet whenever we had Donald Trump, that must have been confusing for them. I, I, am, I am just an... I am, yeah, think I am, about that, I am, Donald I am, just, <laughs> I am just enamored by that. Capcom publishes... Wow. <laughs> in 1990, who, while not as immediately recognizable as our beloved Don Bon Dovi over here, Noid was once the iconic mascot of none other uh, than Domino's Pizza. Fun fact about Yo Noid is that it's actually just a reskin of this Japanese game that I... Wait, wait, uh, hold up. The Domino's used to have a, um, a, a mascot? Yes? The, I don't remember that. Avoid the noise. I don't remember that at all. The only old mascot that I remember that we used to have that we don't have anymore is the the fucking the taco uh taco bell dog you know the dog with like the ring around its eye or some fucking shit and it's like we had this dog in like the 90s and then i i guess i don't know it retired it died or something like that and then you never hear about the dog like they never tried to replace it they never tried to like give people a new like and, and i can respect taco bell for that you know because like they're not gonna just replace the dog and then every kid asks its parents, why does the dog look different in the Taco Bell commercials? And the parents are like, oh, well, uh, you know, he was on a diet and, um, you know, it's whatever. You know, because they respected the parents' intelligence or the kids' intelligence. That's Target? Oh, is it Target? I don't remember which one it was. But yeah, I remember very clearly a Taco Bell dog. But yes, you're right, it was Target. Target was the one with the, with the white dog with the, uh, the red circle. It died, and they didn't want to replace it out of respect. Yeah, it's like, that's impressive that they respected the kids' uh, the kids' intelligence that much that the kids would be able to tell that it's a different fucking dog, and they won't like it anymore. I will let my anime fans help me pronounce. That's about a ninja boy who rescues children who have been kidnapped. Now, I don't know about y'all, like but game. when I get kidnapped, first thing I do is order Domino's pizza. Uh, cool true. spot drops in 1993, and honestly, for a game where its entire lore and existence is solely based on the red spot on the 7-Up logo, <laughs> yeah. whoa. The game gets pretty good reviews and people actually kind of like it. There's a closet behind me in this apartment and I almost just fully fell into it. Chex Quest drops in 1996, bundled with certain boxes of Chex cereal and is clearly just a non-violent reskin of Doom, yeah. which is kind of genius. But, yeah, is. disclaimer, if you have a phobia of rice, corn, or wheat, this game may as well be Doom. What the f***, Brian? I'm going free! Why did you make me play the wheat level, That's Brian? That's true, you're I wouldn't play this shit. I would never play this shit. No way. Die a toad, Brian. Pepsi Man drops in. My mom never let me, uh... She, she never let me play Doom. I had to play it over at my friend Philip's house. In 1999, only in Japan, unfortunately. Pepsi Shout Man. Out Donald and... I'm, oh. I couldn't even begin to tell you what Pepsi Man is advertising, you know. I'm looking this is awesome. the whole screen and I am just lost. Wait, this there game's great. So I love this. There are so these advert games that I'm sure some of you remember that just kept going and going into the early 2000s. Yeah. Kind of goes without saying, but obviously these companies are dropping advert games to try and boost sales of their product, right? Right, of course. The question is, is it actually working? The answer- Um, does it actually work? Uh, let's see. I feel like, I mean, with didn't Wayne's World bring uh, Bohemian Rhapsody back up to, to the, like, top ten songs? So I feel like if there's a really good movie or, like, a really good game, it can absolutely bring something back.
picture, much like my vision through these shitty glasses, is a little unclear, but it seems to be kind of a case-by-case -case type deal. Yeah. Chex claims that Chex Quest boosted their sales by 295% at the time. Jesus. Which kind of makes sense, because you're getting a free We should make game. an OTK video game. This is fucking... We should make a Star Forge video game. This is a great idea. Holy shit. I think a Star Forge video game, we wouldn't be able to play that on Twitch, though. Game bundled with a box of cereal, and that game is basically yeah. doomed. I mean, that's super smart. But then in the case of something like Pepsi Man, where you have to go out of your way and purchase right. a game with your hard-earned money that is a literal walking advertisement, yeah, you wonder why that didn't sell that well, Einstein. Maybe stick to handing police officers cans <laughs> and fixing <laughs> all of our problems. Wow, does that guy ever shut up or what? Hi, I'm Jakey, Jakey, and Jakey, Attorneys, Attorneys at law. law. Have you fallen victim to a crappy internet browser? Does that crappy ass browser fail to meet your needs while gaming? Do you ever do you ever think about me, Linda? Please pick up the phone. I just want to talk to the children. If you're like me, you love to have a bunch of stuff going on in the background while yeah. you're gaming. But oopsie True. doopsie, mama made a poopsie. That Google Chrome web browser you're using to watch that video in the background sure is hogging up a lot of your CPU and RAM's power levels. What the I never worry about this. Uh, whenever my PC finally burns up, I just throw it away. We'll just get another one. I, I view it, it's like, a, it's like a test of its strength. And whenever the PC finally dies, it fails. You get another one. Heck? And now you're getting frame I've been doing this my whole life. that fast-paced anime game you're always playing and won't shut the hell up about? Now that just will yeah, not do. You're not gonna just sustain over a jail, get a job. Off. Enter Opera, Opera GX. GX, a browser with the ability to limit the amount of CPU and RAM usage that you're willing to let your browser hog up That's while gaming so it doesn't slow you down. A browser with the ability to limit network bandwidth usage as well to help eliminate performance issues in online games. Oh, you That's crazy. Also, by the way, for all people saying it's a rich take, I used to do this whenever I had no fucking money. Because, like, in my mind, I've always had... Have you guys ever had something that you turned off and it never turned back on again? I have. So I just never turned it off. So it could never have a situation where it wouldn't turn back on. So that was actually like, that was my logic. And yeah, I would never turn off my computer ever. Because like, I, I think about it, it's like, it's working now. It can only get worse. So I don't do anything tools placed within the GX control panel near the top left of the browser. With Opera GX, you are entitled to all sorts of wonderful customization, including, but not limited to, deliciously tasteful themes and fully customizable color combinations, along with the option for light, dark, and auto modes. But let's be real, just put it in dark. Oh, they need to make a, like, a setting where, like, you know, whenever you go to those, like, dodgy porn websites and you click on the video and it opens another tab? Like, if they could do it to where, like, it preemptively knows that it's going to open the other tab and it prevents the other tab from getting opened, but it still lets the porn video play. That is whenever I will download it. So they can let me know whenever they do that, I'll start using it. Mode, everyone knows dark mode is the best. All options located within the easy setup button in the top right corner. Speaking of corners, the GX corner in the top left is your one-stop shop for all things video games. Oh, you want to keep track of upcoming game releases? Oh, you want to stay up to date on current gaming news? Oh, you want to see all the best current gaming deals? Oh, you want an updated and curated list of available free games to download for That's free, cool. aka what us lawyers call a good deal, buy, 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 sell, sell, sell? If you download Opera GX using my special link down below, your GX corner will also have the exclusive feature of showing my recent 12 uploads so you'll always be up to date they really should have paid this dude a lot of money this is a good ad like i've seen a lot of youtube ads he's not reading off the script they sent him in the email he's he's really he, he's he's putting in 110 percent for this one when i upload a new video like every 10 months or so. If you think Jakey, Jakey, and Jakey, Attorneys, Attorneys at law. law can help remedy your web browser problems today, use my link below to download Opera GX. Thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring this video, and I guess now we'll get back to whatever the hell Dr. Dumbass is talking about this time. The, oh, history of uh, video games, <laughs> history of Bakugans. <laughs> I ought to sue his ass, throw him in the slam house. But what if your PP isn't just in a blatant aggregate? Yep. What if you sneak your PP 
into like an actual legit fully okay. priced real video game. A well, real video game. that started happening like a lot in the 90s and 2000s. Sports games are a huge one with games like Madden, FIFA, 1080, and Tony Hawk. I feel like with any of the, this is this might sound funny, but I feel like if you have a racing game and you don't have, you know, fucking craft, uh, Mrs. Baird's, like, uh, you know, another bread uh, logo on the front of the of the of the the car, like you're not really playing a racing game. Like you, in order to have a racing game, you have to have ads. It's the same as with Madden. If you don't have ads in sports games, they're not really sports games. It's like some weird fucking thing, right? Yeah, you need to have those. Are all having relevant product placement to each kind of sport. How Same with racing games like Need for Speed or Gran Turismo one. showcasing real car brands and real car yeah. parts. Same with Croc 2 advertising fucking little guys. I should have just said Crocs. It would have been way better if I just said Crocs. Damn it, Brian. Stick to the scrap! So far, all of my non advert game examples have been pretty tame, and yeah. there's actually a solid argument that that product placement could actually add to the immersion. It, a hundred percent it does. 100% product placement in sports games adds to the immersion. If you don't have shameless ads in a NASCAR game, it's not a NASCAR game. It's a fantasy game. Type of game. But then it starts to get a little trickier. Okay, Crazy Taxi drops in 1999 and oh, is one of the first one. blatant examples of product placement in a non adver game, non-sports, non-racing game. Okay. But the immersion argument is still potentially there. Yeah, brands like Pizza Hut and KFC pop up in this game a lot, but yeah. also, if you were a taxi driver, you would probably see brands like KFC or Pizza Hut. Like, as a passenger, it's kind of hilarious to imagine getting into a cab just to go to a Pizza Hut by- Y'all ever have a place that used to be a Pizza Hut and it, they try to renovate it and it's still a Pizza Hut because everybody knows it because it's got that fucking thing on there. The roof comes down just like this, just like that, and they think that they're being sneaky or being smart now it's like a fucking you know an animal shelter or something like that bro this used to be a pizza shelter bitch i used to go here in high school you think you can change this on me and we're just gonna forget about it bro pizza huts used to be so fucking good because they would have the arcade machines in there i don't know what happened to them i feel like there's a market out there for pizza hut to make a new pizza hut restaurant and people will go back to it just based off of nostalgia but it, yeah the buffet well the, 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 the shit was expensive though like that's the problem is it was expensive like it, it, I, I don't know man like they really like you think about it like there is a certain type think about how strong that branding is there is a certain type of building and it's been um a, a fucking chiropractor's office for 17 years but everybody looks at it and knows it's a Pizza Hut. That's fucking impressive. That's some got that's some good fucking branding. You know what I mean? Like that's like they need to bring these back 100% yourself like just get the pizza delivered but you get the so point I, yeah, crazy taxi marks a point in time i think right. where the immersion yeah, argument sure. behind product placement in video games really only does get trickier and trickier i'm just gonna run through some examples. i think with crazy taxi it's fine yeah it, it's it's totally fine if you have uh pizza huts and kfc's whenever you're driving around totally okay i'm totally okay with it real quick and you let me know what you think down in the comments gamers make sure to ring that bell and be notified once a year oh, in sonic shit. adventure 2 sonic's shoes are officially soap branded shoes you know what? like the shoes that you put on you can like slide down rails and get all soapy and shit hi right, go off that's kind of hard Fucking shadow got the foams on and enter the matrix that game was so good it was one of the best games ever made Apparently, the only beverage that exists. I remember they added that one girl with big ass titties in that game. I never really understood how that happened. Rouge, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, I, I don't know why. Like, what the? What was this? Like, had they fucking like? Yeah. Wow. This universe is Powerade. Powerade, maybe because it comes in green and can just kind of fit the whole. Matrix Bro, like, the only Powerade you ever drink is blue Powerade. 
you don't even the thing is with power raid is that like you don't categorize power raid based off of its flavor you categorize it based off of its color there's like red Powerade, blue Powerade, green Powerade. Now what's in those? It doesn't matter. Vibe. I feel like they should have had red Powerade, you know, for the red pill, you know, in the Matrix, right? It's like, wouldn't that kind of be better? But, you know, hey, it is what it is, right? Because like the color theme and shit. Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, a game all about remaining undetected and slinking around in the shadows. Ooh, you know what would really help you to remain undetected is if you just f***ing reek the Max body oh, I thought that was going to be an ad for NordVPN. ...and Airwaves gum and your Nokia phone was like... <laughs> that last game is notable because it was one of the first to utilize dynamic advertising, okay. meaning that it uses the internet to change what ads you see in-game oh, depending wow. on your time of day and region. Ubisoft wow. was one of the first to do this type of chicanery, but definitely not the last. Thanks, Ubisoft. I love you. Please don't hurt my family. Please. It was Brian. Brian did it. And surprise, surprise, guess what other companies started doing this in the 2000s yeah. as well? EA? No. Not... Next, he's gonna tell me that Activision is gonna do it too. Not our EA couldn't be precious EA. Madden, Need for Speed, even the skate games got in on it with different dynamic ads appearing on like billboards and buses and shit. But yeah. my favorite example by far is in Burnout Paradise, where in 2008 they ran political ads for Obama. Hey kids! <laughs> oh my god, I love that. That's so funny. That's amazing. I actually, you know, I, I have some of the original 2008 Obama uh, campaign posters downstairs. When you're not too busy T-boning your fellow time. Americans at 200 miles per hour, yeah, vote for me, ones. dude. I'll put f***ing beer in the vending machine. Why? Now, going back to that whole that doesn't yard. add to the immersion debate, that conversation really only does get trickier and trickier as gaming grows bigger and bigger. Obviously, when it's an advert game that has, like, the f***ing king himself on the front of the box, that's one thing. Like, you know what you're getting into if you buy that. But when the king shows... Yeah, yeah that's true. I mean, like, if you buy a game and it's got the king from burger king on it i mean like you know what you're gonna get and if you buy this game and you're like man this whole thing's a fucking ad i i don't know man like that's just that's kind of on you up in your 60 dollar game that you just purchased yeah. with your hard-earned paycheck that hits a little bit different. I'm not saying it's always necessarily bad. Like, it could be funny or whatever, but... I think it's funny. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I, I think that having the Burger King King inside of the game... See, it, it's kind of the same thing that I've said with, like, sponsors and, like, Twitch content, you know? Is that if you make your ads... Like, Internet Historian is a great example, and I, this guy seems to be one, too. Is that the ads create a new avenue for content and they are not what's the word for it they, they are not reductive of the original work there's something that adds to it and makes it more entertaining and more funny and more engaging so like if the sponsors are making the stream better or more interesting or more dynamic in some way nobody really complains about it the only time that people complain about it is whenever it's very rigid and it doesn't actually improve the game. It's funny to have the Burger King King in a boxing ring because he looks fucking stupid and completely out of place. It doesn't make any sense. And the ridiculousness of it makes, makes it funny. But like, for example, if like in the boxing game, every single time they went through a round, they would bring the guy another Whopper. Well, people will be like, well, what the fuck? There's too many Whoppers. There's no way they're going to eat that many Whoppers. This is nine rounds. That's eight Whoppers. There's no fucking way this is going to happen. You see what I'm saying? So, like, it, it's about... It's about how they're added into there. It is different. Like, when I skip school to drop $60 on Uncharted 3, and yeah. I boot up the multiplayer just to be assaulted by the smell of Subway bread reeking up my home, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That Subway bread has a very specific f***ing tang to it. Like, it's, like the pH balance is all f***ed up. I've never had... Uh, I never, never went to sub. I've not been to Subway in 20 years. My dad would take me to Subway very regularly, 
And like, I remember they, I remember whenever they came out with that Philly cheese steak Subway sub, it was actually pretty good. But like, the thing is like Subway is like, it's like they have good subs, but like every other place is better. But it's not that Subway is bad. It's just that every other place besides Subway is better. Alan Wake is a better example for us to discuss as far as the immersion shit goes, okay? It's a single player, offline, yeah. Remedy made game, okay? okay? I love Remedy. Max oh. Payne is like my favorite game ever. Now, in theory, having brands like Energizer and Verizon show up in your realistically portrayed world is potentially fine, especially when a main mechanic of the game is using batteries for your flashlight. But when these very specific ads repeat themselves over and over, and you get a f***ing achievement for sitting down and watching an entire ad on a fake TV in a fake universe. You guys, that this that's that's what the future is gonna be. I guarantee fucking to you. The boob tube, yeah, there you go. I think this shit's gonna happen. It's gonna get even worse. Alan, wake the f up. We're going back to GameStop. We're returning this game and we're buying Yahtzee. I don't give a shit anymore. We're getting Yahtzee for the 360. I think an argument for immersive PP with more solid ground is the Yakuza series. Now, I've never played these games, but based yeah. on what I've watched and read, they seem to incorporate a wide variety of Japanese brands in a much more subtle and potentially world-building way. And I well, that's, that's, I think, the most interesting point about this is that whenever you're creating an immersive world, do you create an immersive world by making it a facsimile of the existing world? Or do you create it as a completely different world like Elden Ring? Like for example, in Elden Ring, I feel like if you got an ad for Home Depot whenever you went through the forest, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. You know what I mean? Like, it's really, like, it, yeah, Horaloo Burgers, yeah, brought to you by fucking McDonald's. <laughs> Get McSlammed. I'm a McWarrior. Uh, yeah, obviously, it's totally fucking different. But, like, I think you can make a very strong argument that if you are creating a video game that like with yakuza like obviously i'm sure that it's probably like some of the mafia games i'm guessing where there's like these rough th there, there's like a rough correlation to real life but it's not like a one-to-one -one. it's kind of a uh, uh almost like a, a mythological version of real life or something like that yeah i'm not sure but yeah i'm kind of guessing that so if you do that do does adding real life brands make it more real and I would probably lean on the side of yes. P personally, I, I would lean on the side of yes. But it depends, though, right? It's like, again, y you know, you're playing Mario, and you go, down, uh, you, you go down a pipe, and then it's an advertisement for, um, uh, you know, a, a fucking a plumber service. Then it's going to be weird. It depends on where it is. Like, Halo... Right? It's like you're, you're playing Halo, and halfway through, uh, you know, Truth and Reconciliation, as soon as you get up to the Covenant ship, finally, as you, get, you get greeted with a fucking ad for Cabela's. We don't need that. So I think there's a time and a place for everything. I'm not trying to get preachy and say you should feel one way or the other about this. I'm just saying, I think if you're going to argue for immersion, there's more of a substantial argument to be made with this game series. Versus Kojima just straight up putting brands like Doritos and Mountain Dew and Axe Body Spray into the Japanese version of Peace Walk. With his reason- I would agree with that. I think that yet- yeah, So basically, I paused for this guy to, to, to explain exactly what he was about to say. Is this right? being to keep things fresh and to surprise players like okay dude how about you it's a surprise doritos yeah bet you weren't expecting that bitch focus on surprising us with another two-dimensional character with giant boobs that breathe through her skin and okay. not a fucking ad for ride with norman reedus sundays in a game where i'm supposed to be taking mr reedus seriously as sam porter bridges get it his last name that is, is very true like that's super cringe that's the dumbest thing i've ever seen in my entire life that's so dumb 
bridges because he's gonna bridge together the f***ing U.S. I don't mean to just roast Kojima, okay? I own every game. I have art books. I have a huge crush on Sniper Wolf, not that one, the one with the polygonal setup. But come on, if you even think about going in the comments and arguing that the inclusion of Monster Energy or Ride with Norman Reedus Sundays adds to the immersion of this universe or is a fourth wall breaking... Well, here's a good example, right? So obviously, in Death Stranding, I'm assuming this is like a futuristic, semi-post-apocalyptic world that has dystopian themes. Am I right about this? I've never played it. I'm just guessing. Okay. So let me show you how to do an ad for a series like that. Okay. Even though teaming up wasn't my style, I figured I'd be safer with Tallahassee. You see, he was in the ass-kicking business. And business is good. It became quickly apparent, however, that he did have one weakness. What are we doing here? Well, take a look. It's a goddamn hostess truck. Yeah, I see that. A hostess truck. So what? I could use a Twinkie. It makes sense. You coming? Uh, yes. Yeah, one second. <clears throat> Are you fucking with me? Uh, no. You should actually limber up as well. I'll skip ahead. And, and they're not, the, you know they're not as good as Twinkies. They, they're not as good. Everybody knows they're not as good. You want a snowball once every three years. You want a Twinkie once a month. Yeah. Snowballs? Where's the fucking Twinkies? I like snowballs. I hate coconut. Not the taste, the consistency. Fresh. Well, this Twinkie thing, it ain't over yet. So it's not like you can't do an ad in a post-apocalyptic world with a real-world brand that improves the quality of the content. You can absolutely do that. And Zombieland proves this. But randomly picking up a monster energy drink. Where is it? Where is it? I think it's like right this scene right after this. I, I don't even know. Yeah, this is not a very good example. This is a this is like the marketing team wanted to go home early that day, so they thought to themselves, let's not try. Let's put in zero effort today. And they did. Norman Reedus Sundays adds to the immersion of this universe or is a fourth wall breaking move from an auteur you just don't understand. Alan, wake the f up. The Patriots are behind all of this. The lolly lule lule lolly lule. But you want to know what really changed advertising in video games? Mobile games. That shit done went and changed the entire fucking galaxy. Because if you release a free to play game and you run ads on it and that game does even a little bit well, you could be. Wait. They make you watch ads in order to play the mobile games, so you pay them by watching ads? Bro, like, that's like one step away from, like, fucking... Aren't there, like, child labor laws for that shit? Didn't we go through this whole thing? <gasps> Oh my god, they, they finally found a way. See, like, the companies, you know, they made these these pesky child labor laws, and they were holding these companies back. They're holding the kids back from going into the coal mines. You know, the kids want to go into the coal mines, do some work, but the, you know, big old Uncle Sam tells them they got to stay home and learn how to read. Well, kids don't want to read. And it took these companies 50 years, but finally they solved the problem. Now they got these kids watching ads. Holy fuck.
actually make a lot of money. The Flappy Bird guy claimed he was making up to 50k a day when that game was blowing up and then he hated his life from all the mean messages and attention he got, which is really sad. And a lot of the time, the ads in these free mobile games are for just him. for other mobile games that 90% of the time don't even f***ing exist or are just like really weird or like really sexual. Like an off-brand ass Costco render of Spongebob like on an island with like Peter Griffin and there's some shitty text-to-speech that's like, Grandma got away with it again. No one can get past level five without coming. <laughs> that's, no, no, that's, a, that's, that's a different... The worst part about that is there was like 50 of those YouTube videos and each one of them had millions of views. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with kids, but it was like these weird sex videos with like Disney characters. It was called Elsa Gate. Look it up. This was a massive fucking thing. It's not like I'm not making any of this shit up. It actually happened. Type of game. We all know what we all know what type of game I'm talking about. Yeah, actually, about. don't look. It Make up. sure to choose your color of cum. And then, surprise, surprise, the free-to-play model makes its way over to consoles with games like Fortnite, Fortnite, constantly having different promotions or events like the trailer premiere for Tenet or an Ariana Grande concert. And a lot of that well, stuff is Travis, actually. Well, they did Travis Scott too. Uh, I remember whenever they did Thanos, I came back and I played the Thanos Fortnite thing. And then I went back, I was, no, I didn't go back. I was thinking about going back. Whenever they added Goku, because I thought it was cool. Because again, it was good content. It had nothing to do with anything else. It was good and fun content. That's what mattered. Pretty cool yeah, and like well yeah, integrated. And because the game is free, nobody really cares that much. Like credit where it's due to Fortnite. Everybody kind of wins. Well, yeah, except the children who are preyed upon with their marketing to spend money on their mommy's credit card, but, you know. Spider-Man! But here's oh, the wow. kick. First of all, I'm gonna take this off because it's really hot and it's like impossible to see anything through these. So I'm just gonna go soccer mom style okay. for the rest of the video. You know your favorite companies, you know your best friends? Well, they started no. incorporating those same business practices and the free to play model of in game microtransactions and advertising in not so. Bro, Yoshi's Island was so good. That was such a good game. I played it like every day. Oh my god, it made me so happy to think about it. Yeah. Free video games, aka $60 fully priced video games. Yeah. Like at one point, NBA 2K and UFC 4 had straight up mid roll ads that played during downtime or even interrupted gameplay. You know, like a mobile game does with the Peter Griffin grandma situation. Yeah. Also, 2K assaults you with microtransactions like every five seconds, so maybe just don't play that game and just go play basketball outside. Like, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> and unlike the subtle play that Scott Adams did back in 19. Sometimes I feel bad for those kids, you know, because like whenever he's a freshman in, in college or a sophomore in college, one person's gonna find out about that, and then any time that he ever walks into any party, everybody's gonna make that fucking yeah. Because that's exactly what I would do to somebody if I knew that they were in a viral video whenever they were a kid. Is I would never let them fucking forget it. 78. Modern games love to remind you that their hot, sexy new game is out too, and you should really go out and buy that one. Yeah. But when that adds even one step or loading screen between me and getting to play the game that I actually want to play, my annoying. patience runs out faster yeah. than Brian on track and field day. And let me tell you, that kid is dumb as hell, but he is quick. Earlier this year, Sony and Microsoft both announced that they're streamlining the process of integrating ads into free-to-play games on their respective marketplaces similar to how ads are integrated in these games on your iPhone through the App Store. Now, in an absolute best case scenario of how these ads get implemented, hardworking game devs getting more money for the blood, sweat, and fears they dump into their indie game or whatever, while ads are subtly placed on billboards or benches or used in like a immersive world building way like the Yakuza series, that's fine yeah. in theory. But after going over- That's right, it's always fine in theory. Because it's like, oh, well, that's fine as long as they don't overdo it. 
Oh, that's fine. They can make some money as long as they don't try to make a lot of money. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm sure they won't try to make a lot of money. Oh, of course not. Everything I've gone through, I think we all know that's probably not how it's going to shake out. And not to be a depressing Darren, but if history repeats itself, all signs point towards AAA companies slowly inserting more and more ads in their paid AAA Bro, how many of you guys have like one of those fucking subscription things where you have to spend money to watch shit on it and they still make you watch ads? Didn't Hulu do that like 10 years ago? Yeah, Netflix. I don't think Netflix does that. Like, my Netflix doesn't do that. I haven't watched Netflix for a while. Like, Prime Video does it? That's nuts. Holy fucking shit. Yeah, Netflix is adding ads now. Wow, guys. So is the Pirate Bay still up? Or, or like, so did, did, they, did they still have LimeWire anymore? Or did they get rid of that? Yeah, I wasn't sure games too because again look at how much fucking money ads make on mobile Six games. Do you billion. seriously think those triple a big wig execs aren't noticing that shit have you heard the way these lizard people talk they already tried doing it with those sports games it's just like yeah. microtransactions years ago nobody thought they would ever put that shit in a fully priced 60 dollar who the fuck didn't think that who the fuck was like? Oh well, they're they're gonna they're not gonna make they're not gonna try to make that much money. They're not gonna try to make all oh, that much money. Come on. I guess now seventy dollar paid game like Gran Turismo Seven, but money talks. And unfortunately, Activision Blizzard and EA and all these companies learned to speak money on Duolingo because in 2021, Activision Blizzard made over five billion dollars microtransactions alone 2021 so that's before diablo immortal holy shit how many of you dumb fucks are buying the storm mounts out there what the hell are you guys doing Just stop it fucking quit like why you do this to the game For Ted. And just like with microtransactions, gamers are gonna push back and complain, but at the end of the day, they're gonna buy it and they're gonna eat the shit. They're gonna eat the shit and they're gonna be like, I hate this, it tastes so bad. Oh, fucking stop making me eat this shit. And then there's a new fucking piece of shit. And they're like, oh my god, hopefully this one will taste better. They start eating it. Oh, no. It's even worse than the last one. God. Maybe if I eat all the way through this shit, it'll go away. And it'll be made, the next one will be good. A lot of you, mostly children probably, which is really unfortunate that children are frequently the ones preyed upon with this shit. Well, a lot of us stupid gamers are still going to buy the f***ing thing because the day I can't live out my Steph Curry power fantasy is the day I alley-oop off this mortal coil, so help me God. So yeah, that's where we're at. Yeah, true. Not to end this video on a depressing note, but I guess my only it's real message video. that you should maybe take away from this is don't pre-order games. Just don't. I've done it. You've done it. We've all wanted to play that game the second it comes out. Yep. But honestly, just wait, wait even an hour to see if A, the game it turns even on. runs properly yeah. like it was advertised to, or B, doesn't have a bunch of shitty business practices implemented. It's a hundred, it's a million dollars. Oh, it's only three, it's only three dollars. Oh, okay. I was about to say. Okay, so you just so you just buy more money, okay. That completely ruin the experience. People should be paid for their incredibly hard work, 100%. But also, as a consumer, when you buy something, you should know what you're paying for, right? Like when you watch a video for free on YouTube, it would probably make sense for that person to run an ad on that video to make them some money so they could buy cool stuff like a jet ski, right? Yeah, like yeah. You would want them to buy a jet ski even though they live in the city and they definitely 
couldn't afford or fit a jet ski and maintain that jet ski, right? You would want that, right? Okay. No, I would not want a fucking jet ski, man. It's the same thing with a boat. I would want to have a friend that has a boat. Or a friend that has a jet ski. So, like, I show up, I use it, I leave, and then he has to put it away. So, yeah, yeah, that, that's what you really want. Happy we could get on the same page, Brian. I, I appreciate that, man. Thanks again to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. And Jakey Jakey and Jakey Attorneys, Attorneys at, at Law. Thanks you for watching this video. Godspeed and a good night and Godspeed. Linda, please call me using your cell phone. I really want to talk to the kids. All right, that sounds about right. This is a great video. I love this. This guy is fucking hilarious. I'm going to subscribe to him. I've never seen a single one of his videos. And now we're going to be watching a lot more. This is fucking great. I love it. This guy has a lot of videos. Well, thank God. Thank fucking God. Please go ahead and give it a like. Give him a sub. This video only has 169,000 likes, guys. Okay? So, uh, actually, I would say probably give it a sub. We don't want to mess up this ratio here. But holy fuck, man. It's just... I, I, I feel like the ads in sports games are fine. It's the thing that I was that I was looking at. Where, where the hell is it here? Um, with, with the Death Stranding. Like, this is probably the cringiest shit I've ever seen in my entire life. That Death Stranding randomly has product placement in it. Like, this is just... It's not good. Like, nobody needs this. Nobody asked for this. Nobody wanted this. Nobody was hoping for this. In fact, people were hoping that it wouldn't be this. But here this is. And I think it was funny. I think that, like, as I said, overt product placement is only funny in these circumstances if it's done through, like, a, the same as, like, Zombieland or Wayne's World. Just randomly having monster energy for no reason. I'm not a fan of it. This is the least of our worries. Yeah, I've heard about global hunger, but I don't care about that. I don't want to see an ad in my video games, okay? So, this is fucking annoying, man. You need to know Kojima to understand this. Well, no, I, I just, it's just stupid. Like, that's all. Like, I mean, that's all there is to it. Holy shit. Go out and buy a monster now. Thanks, Asmon. I remember whenever Summit got dropped by monster for smoking weed. And I said, <laughs> I said that. If so, they should they should have two people next to each other, a person who's st drinking monsters nonstop, and a person who's smoking weed nonstop, and we should see which one dies first. And I heard down the grapevine that monster will never work with me ever again. <laughs> yeah, smoke legally. Yeah, they didn't like that one at all. Yeah, he pulled his bong out. It wasn't a bong. It was a, um, uh, it was a vase. But yeah, uh, ads and video games are just going to get worse. I think that, again, it depends on the type of game and, like, what it's about, uh, how it would really make sense. Uh, obviously, like, more urban-themed games are totally fine. It's not a big deal. It's okay. But whenever you're talking about a fantasy game, you know, like, it's like, oh, let's go save the, uh, Queen of England or something, and, um... You know, you get an ad. This is like, you know, as King of England, it's like fucking Vikings. And you get an ad, and it's like you've got to build a Viking ship. And then as you're farming the lumber to get the Viking ship, there's like an like a random like Home Depot plug. It's like, hey, you ever thought about doing this in real life? Well, you go on down to Home Depot, get yourself some lumber right now. Yeah, we don't need this. So, yeah, I mean, that's that that's where I'm at, even in before all future games are urban. Well, I mean, I, I, as I said, and it also is a matter of degree. I think that whenever it becomes too much, it's too much. Product placement like this makes you remember you're playing a video game. Yeah, it can be immersion breaking. Uh, I think that's a good point. God of War. Yeah, a God of War needs like a G Fuel ad. Um, you know, again, like Elden Ring needs like a... Uh, 
uh, you know, like maybe after you're done killing the dogs, so it's like blood dogs. It's like got an ad for PetSmart, something like that. Yeah, we don't need it. Don't need it at all.